Nationals front bencher Barnaby Joyce, former Deputy Prime Minister, also former Transport Minister, joined me earlier. Barnaby Joyce, thank you so much for joining me. Do you understand why the Albanese Mr. government is defending Qantas like this? Is, it, is, this, is this actually the right thing to do, banning Qatar, if it means Australians having to pay more for airfares? Well, I'd hate to think it's because Qatar doesn't have a Yes, 20, yes uh, 23 sticker on the side of it, but you never know. I have to give it to Mr Joyce, my namesake. He's, he was awfully good at getting billions out of the government during COVID. Um, he was going so well, in fact, he got a bonus, I think it was up to $20 million. Um, he's a very clever businessman, Mr Joyce, and um, he knows how to curry favour. He knows how to curry favour. And I think he's uh, curried favour with Mr Albanese. I've certainly curried favour with Mr Albanese's son. And, um, well, uh, the Australian consumer has to ask, is this at the cost of your ticket? Are you paying more than you should? Um, and when we have corporate conscience thrusted upon us with uh, the Qantas saying vote yes, I imagine their staff are dragged along kicking and screaming, uh, you always have to look to the side. You have peripheral vision of other things that might be happening. Look, you raised the, uh, the fact that the Prime Minister's son, 23 years old, is in the Chairman's Lounge or got an invite for the Chairman's Lounge for Qantas, which... Seems to me extraordinary. I don't want to pick on the guy, you know, but I can't believe there's anything of his own merit, his own business acumen or whatever that got in that chairman's lounge from uh, Alan Joyce. Uh, it must be his connection to his father. Do you think it's appropriate when a prime minister and his governor are making decisions that are so material to the business interests of Qantas that... At the same time, he should be accepting such a gift from Qantas for his son. Well, it does raise questions, doesn't it, Andrew? I've got four daughters. I, I might give them a call tonight and see if any of them have been asked whether they want to join the uh, chairman's lounge. I, I don't think they would have. Um, there'll be a lot of other parliamentarians, uh, maybe Peter Dutton's kids, uh, see if they've been asked to join the chairman's lounge. But what I could say is you would definitely get a better deal if there was more competition on domestic Roots, absolutely, 100%. And um, we've had the ridiculous position in Australia at times where to fly from Moree to Sydney is more expensive than flying from Sydney to Los Angeles. That's incredible. That that That's appalling. Now, Barnaby, uh, Barnaby Joyce, tomorrow is uh, Vietnam Veterans Day to honour the 60,000 mm -hmm. Australians who served in the Vietnam War and the 523 who died there to try to stop the communist takeover. Not that they were thanked for that at home. Have a listen. Not too many returned veterans in wars before or since were sometimes booed or occasionally even reviled by their own countrymen and women. Now, you're going to the uh, Australian War Memorial tomorrow to uh, honour the, the sacrifice. How should we remember that conflict and, and what our soldiers gave to that today? Well, you just think those 60,000 people who went away, I know there's 523 played the supreme sacrifice, about 3,000 were in injured, maimed. When, they, when people go away, it's not just they might die, it's that they might get maimed uh, psychologically, physically. Their relationships with their wife or their partner break up. Uh, their opportunities back in Australia move on. They're left behind. They come back with a sense of dislocation, uh, probably a dislocation from their own families. It's an, an enormous sacrifice. And to think that when these people, when these people came home, that they were pilloried by their own people, by their own people. I, I don't think that it was purposeless, Vietnam. It was, had a major purpose. It exhausted the resources of the communists. So that basically in Vietnam is where they fought and where they stopped. Uh, if, they, if we hadn't exhausted their resources, seeked out and closed with the enemy, kill or capture them by day or by night, regardless of season, weather or terrain, that's what the, inf the infantry line, um, then they would have continued on their push. I mean, why would they stop if they're successful in Vietnam? It, it'd have to be the next incursion, the next incursion. And as we know, there was a communist, there was a communist upri not uprising, but incursions and growth in Indonesia. Uh, and these men, overwhelmingly men, and, and nurses as well, of course, should, should never forget that, um, uh, 
they were the reason that the communist push was exhausted. So um, thank goodness they were there. Yes, I think Malaysia would have been in uh, grave danger. There was a, a, an insurgency there for a while.